<laughs> Welcome to America's Podcast. In this episode, we talked to one of our good buddies, which we've actually already had an episode with her before, episode six. Yeah, Lauren, she's in Florida, so she catches us all up on the news and all the new findings. Of the Florida cannabis industry. Uh, there's a lot happening right now. Um, it's definitely come from nowhere. It was a state that obviously is very destructive by opioids, but um, we're finally getting some of our baby steps in the medical cannabis industry, which is beautiful to see. They just introduced flower, starting to get some more variety and concentrates. Mm -hmm. We talked to Lauren about uh, terpene profiles, the ratios, uh, CBD, THC ratios, what's the most beneficial, most medicinal thing. Uh, we learned quite a bit about the different problems too with the doctors versus the dispensaries and the educational gap with the consumer. Mm -hmm. But there's so much things you wouldn't realize with real medicinal patients that you wouldn't think that, for instance, I thought a, a tincture for CBD would be probably be the most beneficial form that you could induce it. And she was saying people with gastrointestinal intestinal issues. Um, won't be able to fully absorb that. So that's one of the many things I learned. But you'll learn a ton in this episode. We love talking to Lauren. She's a great gal. She's very deep in the Florida cannabis industry, and you're going to learn a lot. Right, Ray? <laughs> 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 okay, sweet. Heck yeah. So tell us, what's what's the most eager thing you've been wanting to, to share with us? Like, what have you learned recently that you've been dying to tell us? Um, I think definitely the indica and sativa debate and how a lot of dispensaries are so focused on that as far as being still medical here. Um, basically, scientists kind of debunked that there is no sativa and indica. Um, they said that there's not. Yes, it's all considered um, to be a sativa L1. It's the same category. And I kind of got it in my notes here for you because I've got some references and everything. So now what, what really makes up a sativa versus an indica? Isn't the terpene profile? Isn't that what really makes the well, effect? Yeah. So your sativa is your base from the plant, you know, height, the ratio, the width, the amount of terpenes in it, and the THC consistency. And what they found is multiple states that are selling medical cannabis when they go and test you know indica's expecting you know myrcene and linol you know terpenes mm -hmm. to be extremely high where they're not and they've kind of basically said um best way to like describe that in layman's terms is like if they were two different you know breeds on their own they wouldn't be able to essentially make a hybrid or genetically modify the same it would be like a cat and a dog trying to make an animal they're not those are separate species they're saying basically that sativa and indica are the same plants but it's totally based on the terpene profiles and thc and cbd content that makes it a certain category and as far as my dispensary goes, we have a couple different lines in it, but we're very based on like ratios. We're not focused on, is this a sativa? Is this an indica or a hybrid? We're really like dabbled into the terpene profile and being very consistent. It's essentially a blend of all three of them and pulling what we like out of it to make it a consistent product for that patient that's gonna make them feel energized or sedated, mm -hmm. that type of thing. So that's really cool. I, so it's basically the terpene content, the cannabinoid content, and the just the ratios of them that kind of make up what you would call or kind of consider um, a indica or sativa. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. the and, only... and that seems like that's happening because no matter who's growing it, it's going to come out differently. Like, yes, the genetics might say that it's one or the other, right? But the mm -hmm. way that they're growing it and – that kind of can change yeah. as well. Exactly. The fact that we can pull certain phenotypes from a certain planet and make it, you know, a sativa become like an indica dominant hybrid. You can't have different species and be able to do that is essentially what these scientists are saying. Okay. Gotcha. The only reason and it would be all category guys is sativa L1 is what they call it. Oh man. I'm getting super advanced. The only reason I like 
saying an indica or sativa or hybrid because I'm giving you a general classification of how it's going to make you feel. So like I'm going to mm-hmm. give you a Jack Herrera to, to go hype you up. I'm not going to give you a, a quote sativa to, to put you to sleep. So I only, re- I only like that because of the general classification. Mm-hmm. So, so what's your favorite ratio? What, what do you see that most works for uh, medicinal patients and patients all around? Um, a lot of patients, um, something that's new for me too, because of the last dispensary, we had maybe a couple of products in the CBD category, category, but they're all kind of the same percentage. Well, we have ratioed CBDs to THCs and a lot of patients are coming in and getting like a 12.5 to one. And, you know, people think CBD, non-psychoactive, that's not going to be anything for me, but in actuality, it's turned out to be like a really sedative product. We have a five to one CBD, but a lot of patients are coming in for the high CBD for a sedative effect because, you know, it's antispasmatic. It's going to relax your body. And most patients have, you know, anti-inflammatory issues. A lot of people coming in with cancer. So CBD, they know is going to kill those cancer cells and stop them from replicating. So that's their main thing. And then we also have, you know, your regular patients that just want to get euphoric and kind of want to ease their anxiety somewhat. Mm. That's super cool. That's, so the five to one, is that CBD to THC? Yes. Okay. I just like to clarify because some people like to switch it around and kind of yeah. confuse we, we have We have the dosis line um, that's from Cali and that actually flips like THC to CBD. Mm-hmm. So our main thing is uh, CBD to THC ratio. So we'll have a 12.5 to one, we have a five to one, and then we have a one to one, a one to four, and then a one to nine, which wow. is my personal favorite. It's 90% THC and it's phenomenal. <laughs> Ray smile. And she's like, yeah, I know. I'd like that one too. <laughs> yeah. What is the easiest form for the patients to, to get this medicinal aspect of the CBD? Um, it really depends on the patient. Um, so like being more medical when they come in, we have to ask like a lot more questions as far as conditions come. And a lot of people are comfortable with an inhalation route. So we have a couple different oral products. Um, we have tincture oils. We have a concentrated distillate syringe. Um, that's my personal favorite product that we can give to people because you can put a rice sized grain under your tongue, you can inhale it, you can put it in your orange juice in the morning. There's so much, mm-hmm. it's very versatile. That's cool. Um, and then we also have these new Theragel capsules um, that are really like soft and easy to swallow. So then we have topicals as well and then we also sell a bunch of different different uh, cartridges from a couple different brands, which is pretty cool. That's really cool. Now, the inhalation, I would think, wouldn't be the most uh, popular route uh, versus well, like medicinal. For for a lot of patients that come in like wheelchairs or have Parkinson's or which first of all, have, that's crazy because like yeah, the, it, that's I, totally I, different like than what's here. Exactly. So like, it's so medical right now. And most of these people that I'm have been dealing with recently are probably 40 and up. They're older patients that, you know, can't even open a can. I mean, they're just completely miserable with their lives. Mm -hmm. So these are people that have never been euphoric. So as far as giving them a cartridge to inhale, they're pretty timid. So I'll give them an oral product, see how they feel with it integrate THC slowly into their system. And then if they want to inhale, then I'll, you know, go into that whole spiel because that's immediate effect. And then they can use that in conjunction with their oral product. Mm -hmm. Which is great too. That makes Mm -hmm. sense. So what is it like over there? What is the cannabis scene or what's, (laughs) what's the, what do you see in California that's being differently done in Florida? um, As far as like, I don't know, maybe the top three things that you see. Well, obviously we're a little more behind than you guys. <laughs> Flower had just passed. Um, Baby so, steps. Yeah, that's our smokable route. We are excited for a couple dispensaries before the law had passed had turned their license in, um, bef- not even knowing it was going to pass. So the day that it passed, they were able to sell flour, and they've taken off the concentrates and things like that. 
So as far as a bunch of other dispensaries that are in the game, we had to relicense ourselves um, to get flower allowed. And then we're going to be carrying, you know, pre-rolls and things mm-hmm. like that starting off and like live resins as well. Which is totally but, yeah, different little, from what you were carrying a few months ago. Absolutely. And then I think of edibles, it's still legal, but I think that's in the works as well. I mean, we're slowly getting to like a pinch of what y'all have to experience in your dispensaries, but you know, it's really we're pretty cool. behind here, but well, we're getting there. And what I'm hearing too, is that the clubs that do have the new rosins and concentrates and flour that they're selling out so fast. Exactly. They'll sell out the first day because someone would go and order all of it, you know. Because is there, like, what's the limit there? Is it per day or how does that work? So you get milligrams every 70 days in your recommendation um, on the state registry. And then after that, you probably will have, like, two more scheduled after that. But you're only allotted that certain amount of milligrams in that route for 70 days. So, like, explain that, though. So, like, if I'm a patient... Like, what would that look like? Um, so typically, most patients, if you get a good doctor, will write you 14,000 milligrams in inhalation, oral, topical, That's or whatever. That's crazy. They route. do it in a number like that. So for, as far as the inhalation route, since flower passed, we had to actually switch, um, go back to our doctors and have that route written in the notes that mm. we are allowed to have smokables, which is what the flower is um but you're only allowed 2.5 uh grams or 2.5 ounces i'm sorry every 35 days um that is the only thing that's not in the registry as milligrams it goes by weight so weird so yeah that seems complicated and it also seems like a way for the doctors to get that extra little money too you have to go back in and have them write it in the notes Uh Oh, That's for crazy. sure. A lot of these doctors are in for this, the money. It's a definite golden brush right now because everybody's trying to get in, get their cards, smoke flower, you know, just because it's here. What do you see the most corrupt thing being? Is it is it the doctors? Is it? Yeah, you... I would say the doctors. I've had a couple patients come to me and their rec was expiring um, in the system. So they were trying to go back to their doctor and their doctor would just like have a float, uh, foreclosure sign on it, basically not even telling their patients, Hey, we're going out of business. You need to find another doctor. And they would come up to the dispensaries like, Hey, what do I do? So we have to basically start them all over with a new doctor, which is more money that they're having to spend. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's probably the grimiest thing that's going on in this industry is doctors not being so efficient, but there are, a handful of phenomenal doctors here that's awesome now let's let's flip the switch what's the best thing that you see right now and in, in the medical community in florida um i definitely see like the drop in stigma okay. um but the type of clientele and patients that we have is not what i would think <laughs> like hmm. not your typical average show coming in and dropping two hundred dollars on some live concentrate Mm -hmm. you know that's pretty it's we're getting like 65 year old grandmas coming in you know that's pretty cool on my end to see people that you're not thinking that are getting you know euphoric at home and that come in and you know have either lost weight or can socialize and carry a conversation and I think that's pretty cool in itself as well. That's so cool. It's like the progression of patients that you see. Because I've seen a lot of patients from my last dispensary jump ship to this one. And just to see the progress they've made by switching over to these products is pretty cool as well. Um, I've gotten so much more knowledge as far as cartridges goes as well. We don't put any fillers in ours. No MCT oil, no olive oil, no nothing. It is just straight cannabis. Um can... Actually, smoking MCT oil over time is really bad for your lungs, and I kind of had the opposite thinking on that. You know, I, over a year ago, I thought MCT oil is antibacterial, antifungal; it's great for you. But actually, smoking large amounts of that, they've actually studied, is not the best for your lungs. So that's another advantage of you know our products. You're not smoking anything that you don't need to be. That's really cool. So is that you say it's all cannabis, no fillers. Is that a like full spectrum? Is that distillate? What what is it considered? It's, 
it's the full spectrum. Nice. You know, it's funny. And then we do we do derive a lot of the you know terpenes from cannabis, but we are getting some outsourced as far as like from foods and hmm. you know flowers and things like that um, to make our terpenes just out of this world. Yeah. 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 Be <laughs> you can definitely tell the differences, and I like to tell patients, you know, go venture out to other dispensaries, try their products and then try ours. You know, I like for people to branch out because everybody has their own niche in this Mm -hmm. market. Um, It's just really, I feel like where I'm at is so focused on very being very medical versus recreational. And there are dispensaries. I even shop at them that they're just trying to get the next big thing. They want patients to come in and, you know, drop money on the latest thing versus, focusing am i really helping this person you know medically because you know a lot of the cbd and thc less is kind of more in the situation and some people can Mm -hmm. abuse it when they get these high concentrated products and that was one of the biggest challenges i think california was having at one point too was that distinguishing between recommending something that's gonna give them a bad experience but could be the coolest most highest potency newest thing out there versus like like easing people into it you know what i mean and that's so important in breaking the stigma overall is giving people that good experience because once they have a bad experience it's so much harder for them to come back harder or to recommend that other people try it Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm so what's your favorite product that they that y'all have probably the concentrated syringes just because it's pretty versatile um it's easy if i don't want to sit there and heat up my dab dab break i can just put a rice size grain amount on my finger and that's 45 milligrams that's cool. under my tongue and it's completely the most pure tasting thing i've had it's phenomenal um, and then I do like our cartridges as well. They're um, disposable cartridges. Hopefully in the near future, we're going to have, you know, a recycling program because we're really about that. Mm-hmm. Um, being very wellness and environment, environmentally friendly. Um, we have got pins that it's a 10 day supply, but there's no button. There's no charging it. It's just, you hit it and go. I really like the ease of that. And I think a lot of patients that have had like hand trimmers and, just can't get the five clicks to turn the pin on just something like that is really cool to have too Mm -hmm. i didn't even think about that just like the disposables well that's so cool too that and i'm surprised that florida is already trying to be a little bit more environmentally friendly like you would think we would out here in california and it's like a huge issue they're putting like so much waste with the glass and the cardboard and all this packaging you're just now kind of starting to see companies move more towards biodegradable yeah recyclable Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I packaging. can't imagine the amount of cartridges that are in landfills, just that metal and glass. Yeah, I, I mean Yeah, that's we, we've gotta do something about it eventually. <laughs> it's getting excessive. Which would be cool to do like hemp Yeah, um, hemp packaging, packaging and yeah. stuff because that's recyclable or whatever. And it's in the same mm-hmm. family. Like that'd be cool if you could like burn it and use it as hemp wick, but really it's like your packaging. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be sick, dude. That'd be so cool. <laughs> You guys should patent that idea. Yeah, wow. You heard it here first. (laughs) So when are we going to finally see recreational in Florida? What's what's it looking like? Or what's the talk? Have you heard? Yeah, I would say as soon as next year. Like, dispensaries are popping up left and right. Uh, Men Men just purchased a $2.7 million building downtown. Um, You've got... Uh, MUV that's, that's coming crazy. here. There's so many dispensaries that are not in the five original dispensaries that you had to be an established nursery and have all these rules. Mm-hmm. You're seeing a lot of dispensaries already buying buildings here. So it's coming here. And obviously those companies, they're known for their flowers. So I just assume that all of this is coming. They know it's coming. Um, so I said by next year. Scoop probably, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. My dad's in real estate. So he'll be like, yay, this dispensary bought this, you know, property, you know, do you know about them? Of course I do. But that's just awesome that there's more players in the game and more products because I feel like the products are a little pricey right now, um, uh, for patients. So there's that's no competition. Supply, yeah. Supply and demand. Eventually they'll go down, which is 
awesome on patients that can't afford it. Yeah, most definitely. What do you see as the biggest bottleneck right now? Bottleneck. What's uh, the biggest pain in your back right now? Probably patients not either. They'll go to the, their doctor, um, pay, you know, $160 for their initial fee think that they have their prescription already in the system or your recommendation, we call it. Um, they'll come to the dispensary and they've got their te- their temporary email and they're like, hey, I see I'm approved in the registry. I'm ready to buy my medicine. But their doctor hasn't put the medicine or the recommendation in the system. So we have no way to dispense medicine, you know, legally or know what to give them at that. So like turning patients away, they get kind of frustrated with us because they think it's our fault when really it actually it's their doctor's fault, not very being mm. informative to them and, or they don't understand that their rec will expire in 70 days. So they'll come back and they'll be like, Hey, I was just here a couple of days ago and you guys didn't tell me my rec was expiring. We're like, well, your doctor didn't tell you. Unfortunately, you can see everything we see on the state registry, you know, that's kind of on your term, just like if you had a prescription at CVS, you know, when it's going to run out, hmm. that's something that you have to keep track of mm-hmm. yourself. So, yeah, um, so probably, they come and yelling at us, basically. Yeah, it's probably all of that, like, organizational, like, filing and getting everybody's information and figuring out the system and everything. Now, do you guys have to track everything like from seed to sale or how does that work? Does every dispensary grow? Um, so Their last year flower? had to be seed to sell. Yeah. Now we've got, I mean, even our dispensary has other lines in it. We have our own line that is seed to sale. Um, but not necessarily everybody has to be seed to sale. Like it had to be last year. Mm. So are there other companies that like just grow the flower and then and then sell it and sell it to to the the dispensaries? Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Because it used to have to be fully integrated, correct? Like those top five or the first five people, like they had to have fully integrated all these licenses, years in the game before even starting the business, all that kind of stuff, correct? Correct. Wow. Yeah, it was very much red taped and now it's getting a lot more loose um a lot more brands are coming into the picture so um they're outsourcing you know their terpenes and their flour and their concentrates and not all of the dispensaries with their name on it are growing the actual product seed to sale um so that's pretty new which is good because it's more variety Mm -hmm. because you know like i wouldn't assume that med men would come in and start growing i mean i don't know if they grow exactly i would assume it's coming straight from you know you know their main growing sites Mm. okay i wonder if they can ship over the state borders but that's just interesting for people in florida to kind of know because it is now changing and there are going to be like big buildings like that that are indoor growths Mm mm-hmm Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're gonna smell something good off the highway, and you're gonna be wondering where that's coming from. <laughs> we do that shit all the time here. <laughs> um, that's awesome. So we saw the other day, probably last week, that in Jacksonville, Florida specifically, the mayor approved to where if you were to get caught with under uh, an ounce or twenty grams of uh, cannabis, that you would only get a hundred dollar fine. Versus last year, it would have been a misdemeanor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could either get the fine or do community service, I believe. Uh, yep. Um, what do you think about that? Cool. They're trying to decriminalize it. I think that's just more step in the right direction. Um, like I said, we're slowly getting there. Surely <laughs> we'll, we'll be on Sally's terms, but it'll take a while. But I think we're hopefully we're coming. No. Yeah. yeah. Don't look up to us because we're not doing it right right now. Believe me. Y'all are doing it slow. We're doing it too fast. So it's, yeah, we're kind of tripping head over heels right now. No one's making any money and it's stressful. Yeah, y'all so. are pretty much the guinea pigs and we're kind of copping off of y'all. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> I, working. I like it. Y'all are seeing the problems before it happens and already trying to introduce laws. We're seeing mm-hmm. the problems as it happens and trying to do laws after it's harder. Well, so. and what people are doing is there's companies out here that are partnering with companies over there. And teaching them certain growing methods or extraction methods or, hey, this is what we do over here. And then the two companies are just partnering together versus 
trying to do it all yourself. do it all by yourself exactly and then you're not really making as much like why mm-hmm. wouldn't you rather just bring in the experts yeah if you can't beat them join them partner up exactly. do collabs and then split it versus yeah trying to replicate and do it all by yourself and not come out with the same quality product so mm-hmm. heck yeah so what's uh what's what's been new with you with uh, everything in the cannabis scene as far as i don't know maybe not in the storefront but uh what you see you saw you you feel the stigma going down in public what else is there any high see? times like cannabis cup type do you yeah any events? any events and stuff there's there's a couple um expos um but it's not like you would think it is mm-hmm. like hey try our products the only time that that's happened is like we have buds for vets here so Ooh. they i know our company even was handing out like live resin to people and giving products out so i honestly don't know where that location was i've had a couple of patients tell me that they went to it cool. and we're trying a bunch of products that's the only thing that i know they were allowed to try it other things it's like People are setting up booths. They're handing out pamphlets. They're really just there to educate. Mm -hmm. It's not like here, try our products, come, you know, to our dispensary kind of thing. It's Mm -hmm. very red tape right now. And that's what I've kind of seen too. Like I saw there was some informational event at my sister's college, FAU, in Boca Mm -hmm. Raton. Like I have seen a lot of women's networking and cannabis. Like you're exactly right. More informational how can we help it get better versus like products. exhibiting products? Yeah. And like yeah, cannabis awards, cups, things like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. which it'll get there. Mm-hmm. It will. Yeah. Yeah. More information versus product. And that's what I get juiced up about because that's what like, that's more of, we get to celebrate fun stuff, everybody's hard work and what you can do well versus still having to push suit and tie. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yep your agenda or whatever but i agree hey baby steps it's getting there so what so what are the what are some changes that's been going on in california Ooh, with uh, cannabis well we've just been noticing this year it's just it's the taxes i mean we're not every, lowering them yeah everybody notices this i mean everybody's feeling it uh, the taxes are just way too high not only for the mm-hmm. consumer but the dispensary themselves and then it's cutthroat of the dispensary so they're not going to pay the farmer as much or the person that's making the carts as much so it's everyone is getting nipped in the butt and the only thing that's thriving right now is the traditional market the black market so it's uh right. it's we're baby steps coming out of it t- t- like kind of regressing almost but um, we're getting there and what i was telling austin and a good way to think about it too when we voted here to recreationalize it we voted for cannabis to essentially be treated the same as alcohol versus Mm -hmm. medicine. Right. So it's crazy. It's like you can go pick up somebody's oxys or whatever kind of prescription medication without them present at CVS, wherever. But then like you can't get somebody's cannabis and it's like ridiculous. Like all these laws about certain places can't deliver like, there's not really a lot of retail stores in between San Jose and San Francisco. It's pretty dry. So we're starting mm-hmm. to see like counties in between there starting to loosen up. But the access is a huge problem. And it's crazy because like we thought, oh, it's going to be recreational. More people are going to get it. But I feel like it's sometimes more difficult. Like how can somebody that's in their bed and can't get up? They're so sick, like can't get their medicine it's it seems crazy to me there's yeah there's still a lot of illegal uh, delivery services as well um like i said the the black market is thriving so it definitely stinks to see that i'm i know i've frequented the dispensary a lot more when the dispensaries were in the gray market area um in 2016 2017 2018 this year Mm -hmm. i've gone a heck of a lot less that's for sure mostly just for clones yeah and yeah and the clones they don't even have a lot of clones anymore so it's okay i mean where it's um every i would say every day is different but it's i don't know it's still a very weird shaky industry and it's a good time to be in it obviously because it's uh if you really want to be a pioneer now is the time to stick in it don't uh don't stick your nose in it 10 years from the road Mm -hmm. down the road and uh, think that you're a pioneer (laughs) so exactly we'll we'll be telling our kids uh, very weird stories about how it was nowadays and 
they're going to think of it as just another drink or treat or what have you. And uh, I know it's going to be like CVS's and Walgreens. It's going to be so normalized. And we're going to have to tell them like, it was prohibition of cannabis. Yeah. Well, it was that jazz cabbage. <laughs> well, and, I, the lettuce. and I was telling Austin just recently, I was at a Sharks game, which I smoke at every single time, even like inside the arena, like I'll rip my vape pen, whatever, like not cause a scene, but you know, like it's ridiculous. Last time I was there, one of the ladies came up screaming at me, like in the smoking section, put that out. That's illegal. Da da da. Oh and I'm God. like, what the heck? Like we're in California like and yelling. people still be tripping. Yelling. And it was so hilarious wow. to see like all the other cannabis smokers around me, like sticking up for me, like chill out lady. It is legal. Actually <laughs> it is. Well, I'm a cop. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, damn, this is lit. Like everyone's sticking up for it. But I mean, hey, you can even live somewhere where it has been around and it's legal and you're still going to have those people that, you know, I'm like, one day it will be, lady. She's like, oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Chill. Oh, man. Hey, it's getting somewhere, though. I mean, we look we look 10 years ago nothing was like this so we're get we're going so fast it's incredible i mean well but what i was really finding out was it actually is legal to smoke cannabis in a smoking section like that like that is 100 percent legal which is so cool really in a public in vegas same as alcohol same as vegas yeah mm. yes i'm so excited for stuff like that to happen and yep. not be like a normalized thing instead of going to a bar yes preach 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 and Nine point <laughs> eight times out of ten, I would rather go smoke somewhere with my buddies than go to a freaking bar and, and have to like deal with annoying drunk people. You know, exactly. Oh, man. Exactly. I would. I'd pay so much money. I'd pay way more than I would right now for a J and in public with my friends at a at a random place that served munchies. Are you kidding me? No. Take my yeah. credit card. Start a tab. Let's go. <laughs> or the other countries that just have like coffee shops you can smoke in. That's so cool. That's fine with me. I would love mm -hmm. that. I would love that. So yeah, Vegas is gonna be the next stop for sure to try out those lounges. So yeah. Screw the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> no more hangovers for me. Yeah, Vegas. I just feel like the com camaraderie in that place. I like everybody's just so relaxed, sharing cannabis versus bars. You're kind of like Rowdy. timid. You can get into fights. I mean, like mm -hmm. they're gonna be like the happiest places to hang out. I'd agree. <laughs> You uh, you never see two people smoking cannabis wanting to get in a fight, but yet exactly. with alcohol. Unless it's... they're asking for the blunt. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're milking that shit. Yeah, don't be taking three hits now. You said pass, pass, then pass, or puff, puff, then pass. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. So yeah, have you had a new strain that you've smoked lately? Anything anything cool? Um, I'm really into Nine Pound Hammer. I, I'm a fiend for some Indicas. Um, yeah. And then I've also tried some Super Silver Haze uh, Crumble. That was pretty tasty. Uh, but hmm. Nine Pound Hammer so far is the bee's knees right now in my book. Speaking of Nine Pound Hammer, um, I, the Blue River um, Rosin that just dropped in Florida, that is one of the Yes. Shows, is Nine Pound Hammer. Have you tried that? I have yet to try that. I might be trying that tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> let us know. Let yeah, I'll, I'll definitely send you guys some pics and let you know how it is. Yeah. I'm super excited to try it. I think it's like maybe $10 more, but definitely well worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard some good reviews. That's just my favorite product out here because it is solventless. So as you know, they don't use any solvents and they're just very um, clean and intricate with how they're separating all the different, different molecules and the rosin like insanely terpy. So it's it's really clean and really tasty. Definitely mm -hmm. something you should, you know, get and like spare every now and then because I feel you on the, it's a more For the expensive. Rainy day. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like smoking a unicorn, it's yeah. delicious. <laughs> I swear, I get bud sometimes that like looks so good. I don't even want to smoke it. It's like, it's like, it like hurts my feelings. I'm like, God, you're so beautiful. <laughs> Why am I crushing you up? Oh, man. So I have a, this is kind of debatable. Everything, yeah. CBD is being put into everything now. Kombucha, face mask, whatever, you name it. Essential oils, all this kind of crazy crap. What do mm -hmm. you think of that crap CBD that's being thrown into everything and everyone's being marketed to that CBD is a cure-all and, and whatnot? What do you... I think it's going to be a phase. Okay. Um, 
because, you know, there's hemp CBD and cannabis CBD. And once people start to know the true difference in them, you know, not to say that hemp CBD is not beneficial. And I think it's great for like pets and things like that. But I think it's more of a gimmicky thing as far as, like, it just being flooded into the market and they're promising all these things where, in actuality, a full-spectrum CBD mm-hmm. is really going to do what they think that the hemp CBD is doing for them. I would agree. I, I think that even hemp CBD, most of the CBD you see put in shit is stuff from China that's most likely not even full CBD. Um, it's, it's almost scary. It's sad that... A lot of people are trying exactly. CBD for the first time, but yet they're not actually getting the legit product. Um, and unfortunately, uh, like most of the time, CBD is better medicinally over a long term time, taking over a long term, not just one single use. So, yeah, and even they say with smaller doses too can be like more beneficial than big doses. Mm. It's just everybody's, you know, cannabinoid system is endocannabinoid system is different. Right, and I, I think that my favorite thing about CBD is the fact that it's boosting your serotonin receptors, and it's an actual antidepressant. I think that's. I wish I could just scream that at people all the time. Like you don't understand how good CBD is for you. Yeah, it's anti-inflammatory and all the good things like that. But the fact that it's an actual, it's like nature's Xanax, and it's you know. Mm-hmm. I didn't your really body. know that. It's yeah, it's an actual antidepressant. Now we're talking, let's make this clear, good CBD is going to make yes. you feel like that. This Not the, the CBD, CBD that's in your kombucha. Yeah, the CBD that actually has THC because you actually have to absorb, mm-hmm. um, you have to have THC to absorb CBD. Correct. And, and what a lot of people don't know is there is a synergistic effect that happens with not only THC and CBD, but all the other cannabinoids as well. They're all very much beneficial and need each other for that effect. Also, a lot of people think that even if you do have a minute dose of CB or excuse me, THC, that you're going to get high from it. Like, let's say a 12 to 1, 12 to 1 CBD to THC ratio. They think they're going to get still high from it like quite a bit. No, that's not necessarily right. the case. I honestly didn't really feel that high off of a 1 to 1. Like, it is yeah, pretty, it evens it out pretty well. Yep, that's why I tell patients, if you want to start getting integrated into THC, do a one-to-one because that CBD is going to counteract all the psychoactive mm-hmm. effects. So you're not anxious, but you're getting it slowly into your system. Yeah. Because you do need THC. I mean, I tell people CBD is the healing part of the plant. THC is the pain-relieving part. Yeah. You need both of them in your system. You know, that's why our CBD has that THC in there. Hell Yeah. So you said the most beneficial form or the one that's most popular as far as like CBD and benefits is inhaling or vaping. I would, mm-hmm. I would think that the most popular way or the easiest way would be like a tincture. That's what I would like. See, the thing with tinctures is if you have any type of like gastrointestinal issues, okay. you're not going to be able to digest it very well. Um, a lot of patients will come back and say it's making them nauseous. They're burpy all day. You're not able to absorb the actual oils because your body just cannot process it. So they'll go with, you know, the, another route Interesting. because of that. That's really cool. Never thought of that mm-hmm. like that. Gastrointestinal yeah. issues. And then, of course, with some tinctures, you have to dilute it in, like, MCT oil. We have one with all almond oil. So we have to ask patients, do you have any nut allergies? Mm. So not mm. everybody can use tinctures. So you've got to be careful with that as well. Okay. It's crazy to me how much more I feel like you have to know than a traditional bud tender. Like, <laughs> yeah. do you have to do all this special training and stuff? Or, like, I mean, oh, of yeah. course you had the experience, but... Oh, I've learned so much more with this company. Um, they do an awesome two-day training uh, via web, um, and they give you way more informational books I've ever had in my life. So as far as the knowledge goes, I've never been so informed on the cool. differences in products in my entire life and feel more comfortable to sell to people being so medicinal. You have to really know your ish. I love that. I love that. I, I feel like and I'm sure you could attest to this big time, is there's a lot of miss, there's not a lot of educated butt tenders that really care medicinally for the patients. They just know mm-hmm. what strain is what and what's the well, coolest in the market. Maybe here. Yeah, here. I'm, I'm hoping it's better there, and it sounds like it, obviously. Um, 
but yeah what over there is it still kind of like you have your not so smart bud tenders or maybe other companies that don't hire as good or qualified of people or no is of that... course yeah that's i mean you don't even have to have any i mean obviously it's so new to florida they'll hire out people of any kind of background not even mm-hmm. being in the medical field and you know when they have these patients come in with all these conditions they don't really know how to react because they don't even understand the concept of what they're talking about so yeah you do have a lot of people in the dispensary right now that are just giving patients whatever they want and mm. then they're coming back and saying i had an awful experience because you recommended this product and you said it was going to do this and a lot of the stuff that you talk about you have to make it very general blanket statements you can't make any promises to people because everybody reacts differently mm-hmm. so it's it's really about sitting down and educating the patients it's trial and error oh. with medical cannabis not everybody's going to have their magical cure. You got to mess around a little bit to find your perfect niche of what product works best for you. And you have bud tenders that are just giving people whatever they want on a consistent basis. And they're not really helping that patient. And I can totally see how that could be an issue too, because from the patient's perspective, it's like, who do you rely on? Like the doctor? Okay. Well, what is the doctor really telling you? Because we all know doctors at the end of the day do have somewhat of a motivation to recommend certain things and other things, but are the doctors even having that conversation or is that more fall on the dispensary to like recommend products? Do you know? Oh yeah. The doctors don't tell their patients anything. Mm -hmm. Literally they're blind as a bat when they come into our dispensary. So we are solely reliant on giving them the education because most of these doctors they're in it for the money and they're just in and out with these patients and Mm -hmm. they don't really educate them on the products that they're about to go buy. So it's our job to drop the knowledge. And some people get overwhelmed because they don't even know what CBD or THC is. And you got to start from ground zero. Mm -hmm. And maybe the doctor just gives them that general, Oh, you have this, here's your X amount of milligrams, milligrams or whatever. And that's it. Yep, you'll see the same doctors writing the same recs for people that you're not obviously putting in the effort. You know, you've got some of those doctors that are just in it for the money, sadly. Wow, you have, you're in a very interesting position where not only do you have to literally educate them from zero to 100, step A to step Z, but then you have to mm-hmm. also coach them on what they should buy, what they shouldn't, their follow up visit to you. Wow, you have a very interesting, cool, and yet kind of a complicated job, I would say. I mean, you're definitely complicated. uh, All of it relies on your shoulders. Is it a lot of regulars or you're seeing a lot new, more new people? Um, I would say it's about 50, 50 right now, Mm -hmm. just because there's so many things changing. It's on the news. I think people are wanting to get their cards more. Uh, yeah, I'd say about 50% of my day I'm talking consultations and then half the day is, you know, the regulars that come in busy all day. You know what? Recently, we've slowed down because we don't have flour and concentrates yet Hmm. um, that other dispensaries do. But I think once we finally get that in there, we're going to pick up. Um, But yeah, we once we get busy, we get busy. And it's so funny is most of these patients, I don't know if they're like telepathic with each other, but they all come at one time. We get this huge rush of people. We'll be dead for like 20 minutes and then we'll get another wave of 20 people mm. at the same time. And you're like, what is this? You'll just see one car rolling in after the other. That's so funny. Sometimes That's the clubs out here get like that. I like get in line and then I look back and I'm like, wow, we just beat a huge crowd. It's yep. weird. <laughs> it's weird like They're that. all thinking the same thing at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> for real. Heck yeah. What's, uh, I want to bring it back to terpenes. What's like the mm-hmm. most common terpenes or what's your favorite? Talk to me, terpenes. Oh, terps. Well, obviously, being an indica, you know, gal, I'm into, Mercine. you know, Mercine, Lionel, uh, Humulene. I'm really into those as well. But a lot of our products have just about all of them. We have Mercine, Pinene, mm. uh, Corphylene, Limonene, Humulene, and Lionel is our main uh, terpenes. But there's, over, there's, over, there's over 2,000 that they found out. So that's a large number of terpenes um but these are the more like plant how can you even have, have a favorite with that many you can't <laughs> <laughs> for real you can't it's totally can you the top three most used terpenes can you tell us 
what they do and what what do you mean like by the patient like. or what they're made with or what maybe yeah, yeah just yeah. the most bought but yeah what they what they do what they smell like what their effect so, is so mercy is obviously a huge one that's you know derived you know as commonly as from mangoes which is very anti-inflammatory super sedative great for like muscle tension pain relief and it's going to give you that musky herbal Gassy citrusy smell. yeah okay somewhat citrusy um, I think pinene is a huge one for like people that. Um, that don't know about what it does. I love to drop ball on that one because it'll boost your energy. It improves your focus and it's a bronchodilator and improves your memory. That's wow. pretty cool for a terp to do besides yeah. just Damn. being like sedated. Superpower terp. So what, yeah. what was that dilator? What is, what's the biodilator? Vasodilator. What's that? The THC is a vasodilator. It actually opens up your blood vessels and allows blood to flow more freely. Um, so that can kind of get into a funny conversation, but yeah. <laughs> oh, so, okay. <laughs> well, um, we're People gonna... try to get all excited off that one, I'm sure. Quote, excited. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. No, well, yeah, we could talk about that, but yeah, that's funny. Okay, so it's, it could be used possibly as a small viagra extract for a guy absolutely male nice. and female oh nice and that's okay. why they say they do have certain strains like for like loving or so active wait. or relax wait what what terp was this <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right what's the third what's the third most popular terp? probably, probably the third is you know lemonine okay. you know it's that citrus. Everybody loves the mm -hmm. taste of it in their products. Um, it's going to improve your mood. It's very anti-anxiety, antidepressant, and it will relieve your nausea more than any of the terpenes. Wow, that sounds great to me. So the yeah, lemonine... so if you have like cancer and stuff, I, like you need lemonine. You need it. Mm. Take it. <laughs> Fuck yeah, that sounds good. So the lemonine obviously is going to smell more like a fruity lemon. The pine mm -hmm. is going to smell more earthy, pine yeah. florally. And then the mercine is more gassy, musky. Yes. Have nice. you ever had your like? Have you ever had the terps by themselves? I have not, but I went. It, I've been to an actual grow lab, and I've smelled them in the beakers individually. I wish they could bottle that up in a perfume and patent it. Because you could phenomenal. do it. You could like just <laughs> like cannabis terpenes themselves. Like mm -hmm. I just they're phenomenal to smell. Could be called like Lauren's Secret. <laughs> well i just liked it because i've seen in videos and stuff of people like dripping terps on bowls or whatever water hash or whatever yeah yeah oh that's nice i see that they're, they're, they're making food. their own ratio of terpenes to make themselves feel that way that's mm. awesome they're making their own little concoction ratio right yeah. there yeah their own little cocktail so we actually went to it was high times what was the cannabis cup that we smelled the little terpenes and the perfume bottle type things oh that was a uh, outside lands and they had the grasslands last year which they had different like cannabis vendors and stuff but they couldn't have anything that had cannabis or anything in it it was like the kiva confectionery had their candy but it was non-medicated um but they did have a little station yeah that kind of reminded us of like willy wonka because they were like giant smell was tanks that you squeezed a Thing to release the smell and they had all the terpenes yeah it was really yep. cool it's yeah you, you could walk down it was a big old booth and you could walk down to each canister and spray the little perfume thing and it tells you all about each uh, terpene and it was all art and it was really cool it was a really cool experience but yeah you were able to spell on that one terpene and it was really interesting so i know that's why i wish like florida could have some of those events where it's like it doesn't have to be like cannabis it can be non-medicated but that'd be cool you could do that. I feel like I feel like you could. We could start this. <laughs> we got a lot of patents going around. Here. Yeah, I know. Y'all listen to this <laughs> episode. Secret. This is trademarked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, anything else you got going on in the Florida scene? Anything else you got that you learned recently or want to tell us, or everyone in the world? Everyone in the world. In the world. Um. Get in the world. No, I think we've just kind of covered the basics. We're still pretty slow here. We're just progressively moving along. Um, and then hopefully by next year, it's going to be recreational. And just about everybody and their mom's going to be trying it. I think once they see the impact in the community, everything's going to change around here. 
um, because obviously Florida has an issue with a lot of DUIs, people, homes breaking up because people are alcoholics. And I think once they finally see all these people coming in and trying to get off these meds and try to better themselves, I think that's probably the biggest thing that's to me going on in Florida is just that dynamic shift in Mm. family lives. Is there bigger companies that are trying to combat that? I'm sure there is behind the scenes, but do you know of any? Combating like cannabis? Yeah, that are just basically, they're trying obviously to get the alcohol or opioid industry to stay in Florida or to remain huge um, because we obviously know cannabis is going to eventually compete or override. probably more the lawmakers and stuff like that. They're probably putting money in the lawmakers' pockets. Yeah, it's just certain lobbyists pushing for more pharmaceutical reps to be selling their meds and, you know, have their patients stay more consistent. Even psychiatrists, you know, scaring their patients from trying CBD instead of putting them on SSRIs. I mean, I think to me yeah, that's... That's awesome. That's a huge step. Uh, hopefully this is moving in the right direction. Hell yeah. What do you want? But wanna... yeah, other than that, I... I'm happy where I'm at right now, and I've got well, way more knowledge. And just the success stories that I've had in the last four months are more beneficial to me than any job I've ever had in my life. And you have some Damn. friends that are getting into it and stuff too. Like, how are there a lot of jobs? What's with that? Um, there are. I would say, like maybe compared to a year ago, there's a lot more jobs. But um, it's still everyone injuries. getting their feet wet. Yeah, but you, as far as, like, getting in the labs and, like, being in the grow houses, like, you have to have actual background experiences. So you got to have people from out of state coming in for these jobs right now. Mm-hmm. So that part's a little tricky to get in that way. Damn, that's crazy. You trying to take a mm-hmm. rip with us before we finish this thing off? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So you got to tell us what you're smoking right now out of what? Uh, well, I'm smoking out of, it is, uh, da, da, da. what am I smoking, right? Mav Glass. It's actually a Cali brand. What is it? Uh, Mav Glass. Oh, yeah, Mav Glass. Hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's got a, a, a little tiny fritted disc and a nice, like, spiraled neck that you We're can, like, put color in. Nice, okay. I like the fritted, gla- I like the fritted, uh, setup, Me perk. Too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Cheers. A little frustration, but not too much. I feel that. What do we? What, what tree is this? Right? Blackjack. Blackjack. Yep. We sell that at our dispensary. Hey, it's pretty traditional Heck. strain. Heck yeah. Black Dominia and one. Jack Herrera. That one's always very. That's I like that in the concentrate. I love that. Mm. I love Jack Herrera and a flower. I love it. Love it. Love it. It's so sweet. I know we've had this debate about flour and concentrate. I still like to get flour, but I'm more of a concentrate gal. I still can't like make the switch. That's, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, Just it's so hard. much cleaner. It is tastier. But I just got a job for a cultivator um, out of Oakland. So I'm going to be in San Jose um, sales, but yeah, Dude, so I'm going to be awesome. totally, like, more into the flower now, too, for sure. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm excited. hopefully I can, you know, get some collabs going where maybe they could turn it, some of it into wax, and then I'll really be happy. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, Lauren, we thank you so much. This is finally, finally, we were able to have this episode. I'm so yes. glad. That's for sure. And as I all, know, we've got like conflicting schedules, three hours apart. I know, it's, it's tough. Crazy. It's hard for all of us three to get together. And then you've been on all these trips. I know, goodness. Jump. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it's awesome. He's here to sure. stay now. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's tough for us to like schedule time with our parents to call with that three hour time difference. It really just throws a wrench in the plans all the time. So, thank you. Well, Lauren, you're amazing. We appreciate it. And as always, thank you. Um, yeah, whenever you get some new news, we'd love to hear it. We'd love hearing okay. it from you. I appreciate so. it, you guys. Love you, miss you. I love and miss you guys, and I will come see y'all soon. All righty, heck yeah. I right, love you, Lauren. I'll talk to you soon. Love you too. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to America's Podcast. 
If your goal is to be informed on current cannabis news, educated on the newest laws and regulations, at the same time be entertained by your crazy but relatable host, you're in the right place. If you enjoyed the show, please share our passion with others so we can better inform the whole world. We would highly appreciate if you subscribe and leave us a five-star review on iTunes and by mentioning us to your family and friends. As always, we love hearing and interacting with you. Please continue to ask us questions and to keep us updated on your cannabis journey. We are here to inform, educate, and entertain the whole cannabis community on Earth. Maybe one day we will branch out to Mars. If you'd like to inquire about advertising with APC, email us at info at americaspodcast.com. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is APC, America's Podcast.